Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos Week 2 Preview Show. Week Alex. 2, take 2. Yeah, we <laughs> hopefully uh, we don't have the same technical issues this time. Alex, love the soup, bud. You got something special planned for today? Yeah, uh, just celebrating uh, going 0 for 4 this weekend. Uh, so dressing for success, even though I I got none. <laughs> and uh, just uh, looking at, at Fab uh, and how people are spending it. And you don't have any left in our league. Oh, man. Well, hey, I got everybody I wanted. So that's what matters. Did you get anybody then going 0 for 4 in any of your leagues? Yes, I uh, I picked up the Rams defense for free. In oh, every wow. League. Big spender. Okay. Big spender, zero dollars. Rams, there are they are my streaming option of the week against Philadelphia after the Eagles gave up what like eight sacks. To uh, the Washington for defense. Aaron. Yeah, so I'm just looking for Aaron Donald just sit on people's heads. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well let's get into this. We got a week two preview show. We're going to be going over all the matchups and talk about what you should be watching for in week two fantasy football, and uh, even discuss some ranks and things along the way. So. With that, let's get into our Thursday night game. Bengals at Browns. Are you even watching? Of course I'm going to (laughs) watch. I mean, I'm rooting for Odell Beckham to continue to have zero uh, impact on the game. Speaking of Odell, hold on. I have to interrupt you here. You made a lovely uh, poop reference with Odell on uh in our last podcast that completely i just whiffed on and oh yeah it was good listening- it smelled really good oh yes the reference yeah. did not what odell's into um so anyways i just wanted to give you a little shout out there because i missed it but then i caught it listening back to it so that's okay uh, a couple of weeks ago you spelled out iowa and i had no idea what you were saying <laughs> so we're even <laughs> <laughs> all right so what are you looking for from the Bengals? Uh, Bengals, nothing. I hope Tyler Boyd, uh, AJ Green, Joe Mixon get going. Uh, now that they're not playing a good defense, I don't think the Browns have a good defense. So I, I, I just hope that that entire offense takes a step forward. Uh, AJ Green led their team with 7.6 fantasy points with a uh, half PPR. Joe Mixon only had 5.6. He had that fumble lost. Um, yeah. So I'm just looking for that entire offense to be better. For me, what I'm looking for from the Bengals, eight different people caught passes. A.J. Green led the way with five for 51, like you like you kind of mentioned there. I'm really looking to see if either Boyd or A.J. Green can separate themselves. Um, it, it was interesting interesting to see that Burrow had eight rushes for almost 50 yards and a touch in week one. That'd be that's a nice little floor if he's taken, you know, eight to 10 rushing attempts a game. But right. And and we both think that he has borderline wide receiver twos on his two of them. So like yeah. he should be fantasy serviceable, especially if you need a bye week replacement. Uh, moving on to the Brown side of it. Uh, We had 13 carries for Kareem Hunt, 10 for Nick Chubb in week one. How about uh, what do you got to say to everybody that drafted Chubb in the second? Yikes. Maybe you should uh, uh, listen to the podcast, read their articles, you know, those things. Yeah, The people that drafted Nick Chubb poured a giant glass of ice water on their nuts. That's what they did. (laughs) Like they are so constricted right now. It's unbelievable. Hunt's got to be like a borderline, if not a low end. I mean, He's definitely a high flex potential low end RB2 if he's getting 13 carries a game. Um, and then you have the Landry Odell situation. It's like, is Baker Mayfield a good quarterback? Can he support either of these guys against the Bengals? Just be happy if you didn't draft Odell uh, after week one. Uh, Landry actually ended up with the better line, five for 61 versus three for 22 in week one. I wouldn't be surprised if that continues. Landry and Mayfield sort of have a connection, but also Mayfield's generally not a very good quarterback. I'm going to plant that flag right now, too. Yeah, their uh, leading fantasy scorer in week one was David Njoku, who's now on IR. Uh, and <laughs> Kareem Hunt. To you. Uh, yeah, uh, so Kareem Hunt had 10.1 fantasy points. Nick Chubb had 5.1. Uh, already, you're kind of seeing what's going on in that backfield, and it's it's terrifying if you're a Chubb owner. Um, yeah, and Odell, 3.7 points. No no thanks. So, yeah, just kind of trying to see, like, if they don't get it going against against Cincinnati's defense, and they still you play the steel, it. like, I... I I'm worried about starting any of those guys this week, period, um, already. And I know some people drafted Odell second, third, fourth round. Um, 
you got to be trying to look at other options already. Yeah, yikes. All right, let's move on to our noon game slate. Let's start with Giants-Bears. Um, Giants uh, had some... I I would say, I don't know if it was garbage time, but I mean, I, Darius Slayton's second touchdown was definitely garbage time. But uh, they have some interesting things. As far as what I'm looking for from the... Uh, not the Lions. The, what I'm looking for from the Giants in this game against the Bears is... Uh, does Darius Slayton maintain his wide receiver one status on this team? Golden Tate was yep. out. Um, maybe, maybe he comes back. I'm not sure. Um, I just want to know if he can repeat it against the Chicago Bears defense. Um, Sterling Shepard had a decent line, but could not touch Darius Slayton six for 102 and two scores. And then also, like Saquon, could not run the ball. Can they run against the Bears? Obviously, playing against the Steelers was a horrible matchup. I think everybody knew that going into it. So that's what I'm looking for for the Giants. Is Slayton the real deal? Or and uh, can Saquon do better than 15 rush attempts for six yards? Yeah, I feel you on that. I'm more like excited about Saquon's receiving than I am anything else. Six for 60. Yeah, like that's, you know, if he's going to do that every week, he's never going to have six rushing yards on 15 attempts the rest of the season. Like, there's no way their line is going to be consistently that bad. Yeah, the Bears defense has been overrated actually since since two years ago. They ha- they're not getting the turnovers. They're not getting the pressure. Um, I actually think Saquon will have a pretty big game here. Um, but if if he's going to lock in a floor with having six six catches, then um, I I just want to see him continue to do that. And if he can do that, I'm not so much worried about the wide receivers. Because I don't have any of them, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but to your point, D- Darius Slayton, wide receiver four right now after week one, um, which is. Uh, <laughs> The two it's scores will do it. If, yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, I, he hardly got started anywhere. So now it's just the question of whether or not you, you you start him. And if you're choosing to start him, you're like, you know, you got him in the eighth or later, probably. So you're choosing at least. Yeah. So you're making a pretty tough, tough decision over who to start him over, depending on what the rest of your team looks like. So, yep. Um, and then the Bears, can Mitch continue his fourth quarter comeback mojo or is he going to revert to what we saw in the first half? Other than that, all I'm really looking for is the the continued evolve, uh, the evolving split between uh, David Montgomery and Tariq Cohen. Monty actually edged out Tariq 13 to 7 in attempts. And I'm just wondering how that changes moving forward as Montgomery gets further away from his groin injury. Um I mean, you can run on the Giants. We saw what Benny Snell did. So I'm uh, I'm intrigued if I'm a Monty owner. I think he could be in a nice spot. Yeah, and don't be afraid because like when you're on ESPN, it's like, oh, the opponent's ranking against running back. The Giants are seventh against running backs. Uh, they play, it's like, like everybody yeah. played one team. So, don't freak out. Seventh hardest. Yeah, and it's like, okay, but yeah, they gave up 124 rushing yards and they just didn't give up a touchdown. Like that defense is clearly weak. I think David Montgomery is a, a top 10 play this week, in in my opinion, as long as he's healthy and they actually give him the ball. I think they were trying to ease him in a little bit and that's why Tariq Cohen was so involved. Um, and then Anthony Miller, um, 15.6 fantasy points. Uh, Allen Robinson had 9.8. Allen Robinson's looking for a new contract that blew up on Twitter yesterday and um, apparently uh, it just came out that he had a talk with Nagy and they said he's full go and here for the duration this season. So um, at least you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping the Bears continue to get the the ground game going um, and they should be able to beat up the Giants pretty good on the ground. Yeah. Credit to you with the aggressive uh, Montgomery ranking at ninth at running back this uh, this week. So we'll see if that pans out. Last um, week it was Mostert. That worked out. This week, it's Monty. Come on, two for two. There you go. All right. Uh, next game, Rams-Eagles, also at noon. Uh, for the Rams, I think the the big question with the Rams is that running back position split. Uh, Malcolm Brown, you saw take over, well, outdo Cam Akers uh, in terms of carries, 18 to 14. Brown averaged almost four and a half yards per carry, had, two, had the two scores. Akers didn't really do near as much as what Brown was able to pull off, only averaging 2.8 yards per carry. Um, man, I'm just... If the, I don't think if Malcolm can hold on to it all year, then he's an extreme value. I mean, he was a waiver wire ad for most people this week. Um, I'm just worried about Cam Akers eventually taking it over in the second half, which is why I didn't really I wasn't 
aggressive in, in adding him just because I, I'm not sure he holds on to it all year. No, me neither. And also, like, if you're trying to just plug and play him, like, Washington ran the ball 29 times and only had 63 yards against the Eagles defense. I know they, they gave up two touchdowns, which, you know, from like a versus ranking, it's like, oh, 17th, like they're middle of the pack. But 29 carries 63 yards. That is nothing. No. So, and and the Rams were really trying to get rid of the ball against the the Dallas uh line and so i think they push the ball down the field a little bit more i do think that they you know are still a pass first offense um and i think it was just more circumstantial that that happened week one um so that's really what i'm looking forward to see you know where where's the cooper cup robert woods thing coming in uh robert woods 14.9 fantasy points cooper cup only six week one but cooper cup has historically been a top 10 guy the last couple of years um so you you have to expect him to bounce back um until he proves that he can't so you you, you have to keep playing him yeah as, as far as that duo is concerned uh you and i both have woods ranked i would say moderately higher than cup this week um you know as a general reflection of how week one went however what i will say is whoever I think whoever or I think the 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 one of the two that actually excels this week is whoever isn't shadowed by Darius Slay. So if that's Woods, it's going to be Cup. If it's Cup, it's going to be Woods in my eyes. And then how about that little moderate Higby letdown with his three for 40 week one? Do you think he gets it going against the Eagles? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he was involved in the, he was on the field the entire time you know when when they were throwing at least he was on the field pretty much every play i know everett was got a couple catches i believe um but yeah i'm not concerned i i think he he bounces back again i think that was just one week um and their their targets will increase substantially going forward in my opinion all right now on the other side of the ball let's talk about eagles how hard Yuck. are you fading carson wentz after last week going into this game i mean that rams line i mean i don't know if it's as good as the washington line they do have aaron donald um but man you, need, man you gotta think that it's gonna be flashbacks the last week in terms of carson wentz running for his life and not having any receivers to throw to and for some reason, Goddard outdoing Zach Ertz again. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the exact same thing happened for him. Yeah, um, I mean, I just I don't want anything to do with this entire offense. Honestly, <laughs> I, it, it looks like it looks like Miles Sanders is going to be back this week, which theoretically helps. Um, but yeah, even if you have Zach Ertz, you're like, all right, well, I have to play him. You're trying to figure out a lot of people put on put a waiver claim in on Dallas Goddard. Um, I'm starting him over Noah Fant this week because of Fant facing the Steelers. Um, but otherwise, if you drafted a tight end high, now you're like, well, do I start Dallas Goddard? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, I think you have to see the Eagles offense put it together for a week. And it seems like the Eagles always suck at the beginning of the season. They dig themselves a hole. And then like weeks like five through 12, they like do a lot better. So yeah, I'm, I'm not playing Carson Wentz this week. Um, I'm starting Danny Jones over him um in in our league um and just yeah it's it's nasty yeah um i'm uh, the one thing i am interested in is seeing if miles sanders does play and if he does what he looks like what that split is in all actuality because there's been rumors of a split in boston scott maintaining regular carries every week to be to preserve miles over the course of the season so be on the lookout if you're a miles sanders owner how many carries is he actually getting um yep Next game, Falcons Cowboys, also a new game. Um, Falcons, do you think that there's another 54 passes coming, pass attempts coming from Matt Ryan this week? I I, I don't know if I'd bet against it. <laughs> right? This game has shootout like, written all over it, man. I have yeah, I, uh, I, I do not want to be facing any players from any for either of these teams, especially after the after the Seattle game last week right. with Atlanta. It it it's just, I uh, like if if I'm lining up against Julio or Calvin or even Gurley to a certain extent, like I don't want anything to do with that. And then, you know, with how good Amari Cooper looked last week, just you want all of the players in this game. You don't want to be facing any of the players in this game. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be brave enough to pick up and start Russell Gage, though, even though he is seventh in targets right now uh, after his nine for 114 last week. I can't believe that three receivers all caught nine balls. Um, and then, yeah, you got Ridley out doing Julio. That's the ongoing story of the season. Ridley already 
uh, with uh, two TDs last week. So I'm and Julio can't get in the end zone. I just saw the storylines moving into the yeah, future. I, Right. Julio can't get in the end zone, but uh, if he's going to have nine catches for 157 yards and 12 targets every week, then he'll be probably won't complain. Yeah. And then on the other side of the ball, there's Amari, who you and I both have ranked inside the top five as matchup driven. Um, Totally. 10 for 81 in week one. And you got to think that he has a huge chance to repeat that line and maybe get into the end zone this week. Um, Other than that, at the receiving position, you got to be concerned about Gallup's three for 50 line and being Mm -hmm. outdone by CD lamb who went five for 59. Like, is there a wide receiver too? That's actually supported in this offense. To me, it should be Michael Gallup. It didn't happen week one. Maybe Blake jar went out for the season. Now, you know, some less yeah, you're tight not, end you're targets. You're not picking up Dalton Schultz to replace him? No, I think those targets go elsewhere. So I'm just... I agree. I hope that there's a wide receiver too that kind of pokes their head up this week is what I'm looking yep. for from the from the boys. Yeah, and I, I want to see if Zeke continues to be as active as he was last week. I know he always touches the ball a lot, but I, I thought that they were going to be more pass happy in, in a Mike McCarthy offense, although... They did not replace their offensive coordinator, so they're really running the same offense, right. and it's just a different head coach, which is kind of strange. Very. Um, so maybe maybe we shouldn't be all that surprised that Zeke is still as involved um, where he is. Number three running back, 26 points last week. Um, so yeah, you got to be happy if you have him uh, on your team, and hopefully he can uh, just destroy the Falcons again this week. <laughs> uh, Panthers Bucks can Teddy support DJ Moore didn't look like it in week one um, Robbie going six for 115 and one although I think he had like a 75 yard score I don't think that you can really count on those every week Moore went four for just over 50 um, do you think that DJ Moore gets it going against the Bucks this week yeah I mean I think so I don't think he was that bad last week I mean the targets were there it just didn't come to fruition I I also don't know if Tampa Bay's defense is very good, um, and if Tom's going to keep throwing the turning the ball over, and and the Bucks are super undisciplined. I have no reason to think that that he won't bounce back and and kind of get back into the very solid wide receiver two borderline wide receiver one category. Um, but you do have to be worried about you know Robbie Anderson being there. They did sign him in the off season, and. You know, if he's going to continue to produce, I, that does limit Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore's value. Um, and so if anything, like you're just kind of rooting for Teddy Bridgewater to, to keep it going. Yeah, honestly, when, uh, when when we did the waiver show, I was shocked that Robbie Anderson was on more than 50 percent of teams. He's currently too. he's he was just under 70 and now he's at 75 percent after waivers processing today. I mean, just really surprising. Um given the history of that offense and the wide receiver two not really producing. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it seemed like Matt Rule was up to the task of calling a, a an offensive uh, NFL game. And so theoretically, yeah. they're just going to keep getting better after week one. And then from the Bucks, I mean, the question is, one, can Tom not look like he's 40 plus years old? Can Mike Evans play? And if he does, is he a wide receiver one? And then that's two out of three main skill positions. And then the third is why is Fournette going five rushing attempts for five yards? <laughs> and does that split continue? Where with uh, Jones going 17 rushes to Fournette's five? Yeah, that's that's a great question. I I mean, I we I don't think we either of us actually even wanted to rank Leonard Fournette this week, but we did it arbitrarily. Um and it's one of those things where, yeah, if OJ Howard is going to be the leading fantasy point scorer. Yeah, that's um, the other thing. There's your, questions at all major position. fantasy positions on this team with Gronk and Howard, too. Right. You got Howard and Scotty Miller had 10 fantasy points. And so, yeah, it's just just kind of a mess. Um, and, you know, last week we talked about like, hey, you have Tom Brady down at 10. Is that a one week discount? It's like, yeah, and I, you have to keep him discounted. But at the same time, when I was ranking quarterbacks, it was like, I mean, Carolina's defense isn't very good, so you have to you still have to keep him in the top. You still have to keep him in the top ten, but yeah, he just did not look very good. So hopefully, they have a good week of practice. And uh, moving on, 49ers Jets. This is going to be Yuck. a blowout. <laughs> well, I Are mean, you maybe. sure? I, I don't know. <laughs> I think they're going to run the ball. I think Jimmy might throw less than twenty passes. 
<laughs> Frank Gore is going to get have a revenge game against the team that he was on like 10 years ago already. Uh, unbelievable. 49ers, again, I, th- like, I think there's a decent chance that I think that they throw less than 30 for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if Garoppolo throws less than 25. I think it's yep. going to be hard to start. I wouldn't start any 49ers wide receiver this week. Um, and I'm really concerned about Kittle starting as a Kittle uh you know, manager, um, if he's healthy enough to play, he gutted out his uh, sprain through the game. If he's healthy enough to play, you have to start him. But uh, I'm interested to see in that backfield. Does that Coleman, um, Jarek McKinnon and Raheem Mostert split continue like it did in week one? Or was that potentially just a byproduct of the air quality index uh, affecting Coleman's field time? So I think there's going to be plenty enough opportunities to go around in that big backfield for Raheem to continue to be a top 10 running back, especially this week, based on what the Bills did to them. Yes. Um, so, you know, even if Jarek and, and Coleman eat into it a little bit, you still have to bank on Mostert getting into the end zone. And even like his rushing, like wasn't even that, that impressive last week. 15 carries, 56 yards. Um, it was that long touchdown, right? But um or sorry, a long receiving touchdown. I was going to say, I so, have Mof- Mostert at four for 95 and one, although that was a pa- that's passing game usage, but yeah, right. that, so, that's 75 yard touchdown. Yeah. So I, I'm just like, Hey, Jarek McKinnon's back. I think they're going to keep using him. I think they're going to keep throwing to him out of the backfield. Um, so really it's, I, he's, I think he's locked in as a third down back. And then you just hope that Coleman doesn't eat into first, second down. Um, with Mostert uh, too much this week. The one concerning thing about McKinnon is his touchdown came from the five yard line. So that's, that wasn't Mostert. That was McKinnon. And so maybe, I mean, if, if I'm starting a running back, I want him to certainly be on the field when you're in the five yard line. Cause then that's pass or run any play really, no matter what down it is. Um, True. All right. Other side of the ball. What do you want to say about the J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets? Uh, nothing. I think we can move on. <laughs> Crowder is the only person you're starting. Maybe. I mean, Herndon wasn't awful with the six for 37 line, but like you're not starting anybody else. There's not a whole lot of interest there. You're not going to want to pick up and play Frank Gore unless you're in some crazy deep league. So he's a starter. I mean, if love love's going to be out a couple of weeks, maybe you can use him next week. I mean, I, you can't, you can't quit Frank Gore next week at Indy. Uh, the week after home against Denver. Um, so maybe are, he has v- some value the week after, or at least marginal. If but you're in yeah, a 16 no team league, maybe best ball. No thanks. Um, all right, moving on. Broncos Steelers still on our noon game schedule. Uh, Broncos Philip Lindsay is out multiple weeks with turf toe. Melvin potentially being a top five fringe RB one in the meantime, uh, went 15 for 78 and one last week. Do you think he repeats against the Steelers? I think he's going to have a hell of a time running the ball. Uh, yeah, I, I discounted him really hard just because of the mat. Like if Saquon's going to do what he did 15 for like, six, like, I, I don't know how much better Melvin does. He did have the lot. He lost a fumble this week too, which is already, Potentially a concern um, that is carried over from his uh, Chargers days. Um, yeah, I'm I'm fading everybody on this offense. Um, I know Noah Fant was uh, at 16 points last week, but you just can't. I'm I fade people really hard when they go up against good defenses, and like you just you just have to do it. Um, here. I, I don't want to play anybody unless I absolutely have to. Yeah, I wouldn't be excited to play Sutton either. First game coming back from an injury. Um, Steelers. Yeah, is he actually playing? Yeah, maybe if he plays. Yeah. yeah. And then Steelers, James Conner. I think he probably plays. He looked fine on the sideline. Um, the Broncos obviously don't have Von Miller. I would play James Conner if he's healthy enough to play. Um, and I, I think that the split I don't really think that there would be some sort of crazy split with Benny Snell either. So I would start up Connor if you got him and then Juju or Deontay. The the debate continues this week against the Broncos with uh, Deontay having uh, four more targets than Juju last week, but Juju having the two scores. Um, I think you got to probably consider starting both of them. I agree. I There's no 
there's no difference between the two. It just happened that Juju got in the end zone is and his wide receiver seven and Deontay didn't and his wide receiver fifty two. Like yeah. I, I know that I know that sounds very weak, but you it's, it can be hard to predict touchdowns and, and you know, he had four if, more targets. So there's extreme value there still. Yeah, and absolutely. Ben so woke like, up De- in Deontay the should be a two. like. Yeah, he should be a target for trades, especially if he has another down week, but he still has 10 targets. Um, oh. You know, if, if, if he's going to end up with 120 plus targets on the season, you, you have to go get him because he's going to end up being a wide receiver too at some point based yeah, on just targets nice, alone. That's a nice buy low candidate. Um, yep. Moving on, Jags, Titans, Jaguars. Can a receiver separate themselves? You had three guys really all have kind of I don't know, touchdown propped up lines with Cole Chenault Jr. and Shark all getting into the end zone, all having five or less catches for like 50 or fewer yards. Uh, I think if you're a Shark owner, you're a little disappointed in week one. Uh, granted, I mean, Minshew was so extremely efficient, only throwing 20 passes. Um, that that might make it difficult, but hopefully Shark is able to separate himself against the Titans this week. And then... With no running back signing, at least so far that I'm aware of, you got to be firing up James Robinson. 16 for 62 plus another 28 yards through the air. Almost 100 yards. I got him at running back 32. You have him at 37. So I I have him as a decent flex play. You have him just outside of flex territory or considering for flex. But I was pleased with James Robinson. I I think they go back to not being in control of the game and Tennessee's just going to bludgeon them and they'll open it back up a little bit more and have Minshew be throwing more than 20 times and uh, James Robinson gets discounted a little bit. Chris Thompson, maybe he shows up if they're behind more in the passing game after doing nothing last week. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that Shark kind of shows up a, again and becomes the number one there. I think he's clearly the number one. Just didn't happen week one as he was the, the third uh, ranked receiver on his own team uh, in fantasy points. And then moving on to the Titans side of the ball, can Tannehill be another top 16 quarterback this week? Alex (laughs) Krog, uh, he went 29 of 43 pass attempts, Alex Krog, for 249 yards and two scores last week, Alex Krog. Are you feeling Tana thrilled yet? I noticed you still... Yeah, did I rank him at like 25 or something like that? He's, I was going to say, I saw your low. ranking and it was still very offensive. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm not. I'm going to keep offending. You're just sticking to it just to be stubborn? Yeah. Well, yep. wow. I, I, I don't want... I mean, You have him AJ down at 26, Brown. so you moved him up yep, a grand total go. of two spots. I have yep. him at... AJ, have him, oh. AJ Brown is my concern here. Um, they're going against they're the gonna Jags. Tr- they're going to light it up. I got a, I got if, Tannehill as my 13th overall QB. Come on now. If if they threw that much and AJ Brown only has 6.4 points in a half PPR league, um, that's is, extremely disappointing. But this, Corey Davis looked good. Yeah, former, uh, seven for 100? Pick. Yeah. Uh, Johnu Smith, uh, seven targets, four catches, 36 yards, and a score. I think he makes an excellent... Um, stream of the week he is my tight end stream of the week and i'll get into a little bit more why when we get there but also was... i would just say that the tennessee offense would have looked a lot better if uh, guskowski didn't miss three field goals and an extra point <laughs> uh lions packers um lions i mean you just got to stay away from the backfield and then really all you're looking for is can galladay get back to one being healthy enough to play and form and then out of the Packers, really all I'm looking for is was last week a fluke in the passing game uh, with Rodgers throwing uh, how what? He had 32 40 completions, times. 44 attempts, four, four scores last week. Like, unbelievable. And then really it's just the MVS versus Alan Lazard. What else are you looking for out of this game? TJ Hawkinson, if if he's going to remain a top five tight end, he's number he's number four overall. He had fourteen point one points against it, again an OK Bears defense, but I mean their secondary is always a little leaky um, to the middle of the field, which is where Hawkinson was working. Um, so just to kind of see, especially if Galladay doesn't play, is is Hawkinson like the guy there uh, again, staying away from their their backfield entirely? Uh, for the Packers, I mean. Marquez Valdez Scantling, like he left points on the field last week by dropping at least one significantly 
like 40 yard pass and he still finished with 17 points so I mean I know he's the home run hitter I know Lazard's more of the underneath guy but I think that they get back to running the ball more and if they don't then um I mean Devontae Adams is going to have 200 catches and <laughs> it'll be astounding uh Bill's Dolphins Oh man, I'm not really pumped for this game, but I I, mean, I just think Josh Allen's going to run away with it. Um, Moss and Singletary each had nine carries. Moss at 30 yards versus Singletary's 11. Uh, I think Josh Allen again is the running back to own. 14 attempts, 57 yards to score week one, and then for some reason, Stephon Diggs and John Brown were both viable last week. Uh, do you think that that continues in week two against the Dolphins? I mean, why not, right? There you but, go. I mean, the Dolphins' passing defense was fine last week. It was Cam that destroyed them. Um, so I would not be surprised to see the exact same thing happen with the Buffalo Bills where they slow the wide receivers down and, you know, Josh Allen just destroys them on the ground. If if Singletary and Moss don't get more carries this week, I think it's very concerning. Yeah, you, you they're, they're almost unstartable. Um and for the Dolphins, all I really have is is the Miles Gaskin takeover continued. Um, if it is, I mean, if it's a three headed backfield, you got to stay away. Um, however, he what he had nine for forty on the ground and another four receptions, so thirteen touches, maybe some value. Yeah, but. the only thing I'm looking for is should I be dropping Jordan Howard? Honestly, like if if yeah. he doesn't have more than eight carries in this game um, again, then he's borderline droppable and just let somebody else roster him. And like when he hits his big week, he'll probably be on the guy's bench. So um, that's that's really all I'm paying attention to is should I be dropping Jordan Howard after this week because he isn't fantasy viable? Yeah, you got to think that Fitzmagic is going to have a hard time supporting either of those any of those receivers or offensive weapons as well against the Bills yeah. defense after going after throwing three picks last week too. So, yep. Vikings Colts. Um do you think a wide receiver begins to establish themselves as wide receiver two? Uh Ola BC Johnson went 3 for 56, Jefferson 2 for 26. I don't I don't think that they're going to honest I guess my opinion is I don't think that they're going to support a wide receiver two in that offense. They only threw 25 passes. Uh or, or I think they're only going to throw 25 passes a week. So, I, I agree. They're just going to ground and pound with Dalvin and Madison and just, hey, when we need you to throw, uh, we'll let you throw. Also, their defense is really terrible, so maybe they will have to throw more if they're getting behind in games. Yeah. Um, but as as long as they're able to convert um, and have long sustained drives down the field, which is kind of a Kirk Cousins dink and dump specialty, um, I, I would not be surprised to not have there be a, a second wide out in this offense. But BC seven points week one. Maybe, you know, just pay attention to him. Justin Jefferson, uh, not really a factor week one. No, I think it's more of a second half of the season, year two for him. And then on the Colts side of the ball, we have Marlon Mack going down with that Achilles injury. So the big question is, what does the running running back split look like here in week two? You had Naheem Hines involved actually ahead of Taylor when all three were healthy. And then you lose Mack. Hines is going to be that third down back. I think he also gets regular touches. 37% 37% of Rivers targets last week went to the running back position. So hello, Naheem Hines, AKA Austin Eckler 2.0, uh, seven for 30 in a score and eight forty five in another score ran 27 routes. I just love Naheem Hines. He was one of my, if not my top, one of the top of my waiver ads for the week. Yep. And I'm looking to see like, what is, is if Phil Rivers is going to keep checking down TY's value is so decreased. Um, it, yeah. At least he got through week one healthy. But if Paris Campbell is going to be outpacing him, I believe he ran more routes, was on the field, more snaps than TY. Yep. And plays a slot. Hello, Keenan Allen. That's not what you're looking for as a TY Hilton owner. Yep. Tied TY in targets, but yeah, on the field, ran more routes. Uh, Washington Cardinals. We're in our afternoon games now. I think you got to be evaluating the Gibson versus Barber split continued 2.0 this week. Uh, Gibson actually had a respectable yards per carry going nine for 36 Barber 17 for 29 
did have the two scores. I don't really want to start either of these running backs if I have either of them. Nope. Um, and then I think the, the, really the story of this offense is they're going to, those receivers are going to go as far as Dwayne Haskins takes them. And right now it's like, I don't know, to the restroom and flushing them down the toilet. So bloosh. Yeah. I, right. I mean, Terry McLaurin, uh, 8.6 points week one, 40th ranked wide receiver after week one is we still have him um, ranked in the twenties, but man, well, yeah, that's cause they don't have anybody else to throw to. I mean, yeah. you, you go down the list, Steven Sims, Jr., Dontrell Inman, who he's been in the NFL for like 40 years, I feel like. Um, so I just, yeah, there was nobody else that they threw to besides Logan Thomas, who is currently tight end seven. He had uh, almost 12 points last week. Um, if Peyton Barber is going to be the goal line back, um, Antonio Gibson is basically the new Adrian Peterson last year where, where you have to roster him, but you're never going to play him which is a little disappointing. <laughs> yeah, which is why I also didn't try to add him anywhere, even though he had 17 carries. Uh, Cardinals. Um, I don't really have a whole lot for the Cardinals. Um, I'm just firing up DeAndre, and I'm firing up Drake, and I'm firing up Kyler Murray, and they're all studs, and I don't really think that there's a whole lot else in that offense. I think they might have a difficult time running the ball with Drake against that Washington line. Maybe Kyler's flying or running for his life against the Washington defensive line this week as well. Um, are you looking for anything exciting out of the Cardinals? Larry Fitzgerald. My oh, sleeper Lord. special garbage. He's, still on, he's on pace for 80 targets this year, but he went up against a tough defense week one. I still do think he's going to be playable at some point. Yeah. Um, did Lazarv have a touchdown this week, this last week, or did Larry Fitzgerald? Who has more fantasy worry. points? Okay. I'm just, you're yeah. losing every board bet, by the way. Um, yeah. I don't think Fournette's going to be a top 12 guy this year. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm going to win that one. Um, no, I'm, I'm not really looking forward to anything other than to continue to see Kyler Murray and uh, DeAndre Hopkins love blossom all over everyone. Mm, blossom. All right. Uh, moving on. Ravens, Texans. This is going to be an ugly game for the Texans, man. Um, Duke is practicing. I don't think is necessarily healthy, obviously, after missing part of last week's game. Um, I really think David Johnson has a chance to cement that three down back role, just like you know, what he projected in week one. Um, I think I'm really all I'm looking for out of that offense. My only question is you need to watch for the continued wide receiver split between Fuller and Cooks as Cooks gets healthier. Will Fuller and Randall Cobb, who you still have to throw in there. I know you don't want to, but they signed him this offseason and he was on the field for more snaps than Cooks was. Fuller had more than a 30% target share last week. Does that continue? If it does, he's a top. 10 top 15 guy. Um, and then out of the Ravens, really the question everybody wants to know is, is it Dobbins or Ingram right now? It's basically a 50, 50 split. Um, Ingram going 10 for 29 Dobbins going seven for 22. And those two scores last week, man, I, those both of them are hard to start because Lamar's the RB one in that offense. I totally agree with you. And I have them both right. Like I think down in like the twenties, thirties. Yeah. Um, I have them ranked back to back down there too. And it's just like, you can, it's really hard. They're so touchdown dependent. And if they yeah. don't score a touchdown, you're going to have like three points. And so the floor is so low for them. And I think we both generally take the, we want the highest floor possible. And if somebody explodes, that's great. So it's trying to start them again this week um, is, I mean, if you can do it and it works good for you, um, but I would have trepidation about it. Yeah. My only hope for this. And I guess what I'm really looking for is I want Gus Edwards to be phased out of the offense and for those carries to go to these two guys. So that's really what I'm looking for. Cause then I think that helps these two actually get some value back. Um, yep. Chiefs chargers chiefs is Sammy legit or is he fool's gold? Uh, that's my question. And then does uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire's role expand after his 25, 138 and one week one? Um, you know, he was taken out on some third downs and things early in that game, but really he was calling his own shots by the end. So hopefully that continues. What are you looking for out of the Chiefs? I just want to see excellence. I, I want them to <laughs> score 50 points every week and just be the greatest. Chargers got a good defense, man. It's going to be hard. Yeah, no, it's it's a good it's a good early season test for them, I guess, to a certain extent. And now that they kind of put their offense on tape and what it looks like with Clyde. Yeah. So I'll be I'll be interested to see are they gonna play up and force them to pass? Are they gonna play back and force them to run? 
it seems like Mahomes is in complete control of the NFL right now. And then for the Chargers, I'm 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 looking for the expanded role of Josh Kelly, 12 for 60 in his touchdown, a score last week. I'm I'm looking to see if he has completely jumped Justin Jackson, which I believe he has. And then other than that, Mike Williams out to Keenan Allen. Williams, four for 69 and zero. Uh, Allen went four for 37, no touchdown either. Um, I really am not excited about starting either of these receivers. It's the Hunter Henry show and yep. Tyrod and as as far as Eckler and, you know, Josh Kelly take them. Yeah, we talked about it uh, before the season started and Tyrod historically has not supported even a wide receiver too, except for maybe Sammy Watkins' his rookie year. And the tight end is basically all you have to hang your hat on. And Hunter Henry, 9.8 fantasy points week one, 14th best tight end. I would expect him to finish a little higher than that um, because I I think he's going to be the main go-to guy, especially when they get behind in this game. Um, But I I would not be surprised to see a garbage time touchdown for Mike Williams or or Keenan Allen. But um, I I think Hunter Henry is the only guy that you actually want to own in that offense besides the running backs. Yeah. Um, Moving on to our Sunday night game. We have Patriots Seahawks. Uh, Do you think Cam repeats as a quarterback one had 15 for 75 and two scores on the ground? Man, you got to be happy if you got him at the end of drafts, right? You, you are you starting him against not, the, play, the Seahawks? Yeah, you you have to. I mean, yeah. Matt Matt Ryan uh, put up a good game against them, uh, and I mean, if you're gonna get those fifty rushing yards every week, that immediately increases your floor. He could throw two picks and still be positive just because of the rushing yards, and he's gonna throw for probably at least two hundred yards every week. And if he scores a couple touchdowns, then I was just saying, I mean, if he throws two scores and throw two, throws two picks, it just makes his rushing touchdowns counts as passing touchdowns. No, <laughs> right. I know. Like so it doesn't matter. Yeah, he's yeah. I, I don't see why he wouldn't. I, I am a little concerned for Julian Edelman. Um, he was the leading receiver on their team. Um, they threw 19 passes. I don't think any of those yeah. receivers are viable if they're up in game or I mean, I'm, I don't want to start them. Yeah, the the targets aren't going to be there. I, I thought they I thought there would be enough to support Julian as a wide receiver too this year, and I, it looks like I am incorrect. Yeah, um, moving on to the Seahawks, I think you know the the Metcalf Lockett question. The answer is start both because they're both yep. great. And then no I mean that's the answer. Even though Lockett had twice as many catches, I mean they're both so startable. Um, and then the uh, the real question for this week is. How does the split between Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde evolve in week two? I, I yikes. I, you got to start Chris Carson if you got him. If you're desperate at running back, maybe you pick up Carlos Hyde. Hide, hide your Chris. That's what you got to do. And that you yeah. hope that <laughs> hide your Chris, hide, hide your, your wife. wife. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got to make sure like if Chris, if Carlos Hyde has even a close to the same amount of number of rushing attempts as Chris Carson does, um, you got to be trying to trade Chris Carson and hope he gets in the end zone a couple more times this week to keep his value high. Um, otherwise, it's uh, it's kind of scary right now, honestly. <laughs> and then lastly, our Monday night game, Saints Raiders. I think the Saints are going to destroy the Raiders. Um, really, I'm just looking for that Lat Murray Kamara split. Uh, Lat- Mike, Mike Thomas is going to be out. Yeah. So who uh, steps up? Emmanuel? Emmanuel Sanders, or it, it seems like. The, they don't use Kamara until they have to. And because Michael Thomas is out that Kamara would be more involved than he usually is. So yeah, Emmanuel Sanders, Jared Cook had a ton of targets last week. Um, almost, it seemed like more than he had in any game last year. And so. you hated on him all preseason. Yeah, he had a yeah, decent he didn't show. have the targets, but now the targets are there. And especially with Michael Thomas out, you know, he could have 10 to 12 targets this week and I wouldn't be surprised. And Thomas is going to be out for a while with that high ankle sprain. And then from the Raiders, I have Josh Jacobs as my RB2. I'm just bullish on him. I wouldn't be surprised, if, obviously, if he finishes lower than that. I think the Saints have a good defense. Um, yep. my, I think the real question and what to watch for from the Raiders is can, can a wide receiver start to separate themselves? You had a bunch of guys finish with like three or fewer targets at the, at the receiver position. And you're almost man. hoping that Las Vegas gets down big and they just start checking down to Josh Jacobs. There this one, just to make like if if he is that guy and they're not checking down to Devonte Booker or whoever, um, then you're you are ecstatic as a Josh Jacobs owner because his floor is incredibly high as a top five guy the rest of the year. If he's going to keep having all those catches. 
There you go. And that brings us to... Stream of the week. Our streams of the week. So uh, I'm going to save the best one for last. These are guys that I've pulled out as streams. My kicker stream is Mason Crosby. He's the number one uh, kicker right now, only owned in under 30 three percent of leagues uh my defense the chiefs at the chargers i think that the chiefs have a chance to really just demolish the chargers make them one-dimensional early and put them away uh, my tight end stream of the week is johnny smith um again we talked about titans at jacksonville he had seven targets four catches 36 yards and a score in week one that brings me to my qb stream of the week ryan Tannehill. 29 to 43, 250 and two scores. Quarterback 16 last week should be available, is available everywhere. I have him ranked 18th. Alex has him down at 28. He's only rostered in about a third of ESPN <laughs> leagues. He gets the Jaguars. I just think he's going to absolutely throw for at least two scores. Wouldn't be surprised if it was another 250. So, again, if you need 20 points, he's free. Yep. Uh, I, I'm higher on Latavius Murray than I usually would be. He's not really a stream of the week, but I think if you have him, you have to start him this week with Michael Thomas not playing. Um, so that that's just the running back I'm looking for there. Uh, from a defensive perspective, LA Rams, the Eagles gave up like eight sacks last week to the Washington football team defense. You got to love them. The Rams were available in every league that I'm in. I think they were only um, rostered in like 10% of leagues or something like that. I'm sure Jason will spot check me on that, but it's like th- those are really the two guys. If you ha- if you don't have a quarterback, I guess Ryan Tannehill's fine. But I would not be surprised to see Joe Burrow um, come out and have a great game. I know that this is dropping the day of. Um, but if you if you can go out and get Joe Burrow, I, I think he does show up against Cleveland. And then from a wide receiver perspective, I mean Paris Campbell that Jason's already talked about. If he's still a free agent, like you and have claimed. to go get him. I could spend yeah, all the fab. Yeah, you have to go get him. And then even like a John Brown type who is currently the 28th best player in fantasy. um, You know, I would not be surprised to see him have another decent game with with Josh Allen um, back there. So um, those are my uh, my streamers. Uh, Hopefully the my defense play doesn't uh, doesn't cost people because uh, me picking up and playing the Eagles in every league last week um, absolutely lost me two two games. Um, because they sucked. Uh, with that, and Alex's wonderful, invaluable fantasy advice, let's switch over to the social media page. Please, they suck. I suck. Oh, why do people listen to us? Please like, subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. Follow us. Uh, we are at the FF Sackos on all of our social media. We have live rankings for all positions and flexes live on our website, the fantasy football sackos.com. Please check those out as well. And if you're watching on YouTube, why don't you go ahead and hit that bell so you get a notification uh, every time we post, which is now Tuesdays and Thursdays. With that, have a good night. Thanks for listening. See ya. Good luck week two. Don't, uh, you know, be like Odell this week. Shit the bed. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.